G'day everyone and welcome to Self Reliance Australia. Before we get going today, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody. Um, look, this week I hit 500 subscribers and look, while I know that's not a big deal in, the, in you know, probably in the whole YouTube universe where people have millions and millions, um, for me it is, it means there's 500 people out there who have taken the time, invested their time to watch the channel, so I really do appreciate that, but also you know, taking the time to then subscribe and come back and watch it time and time again. So, look, I really do appreciate that. It does help the channel to grow. It helps um, get the information out to people. And more importantly, it tells me that there's at least 500 people out there who find the information that I'm putting together, um, you know, enjoyable and useful, and hopefully both at the same time. So thank you very much for that. Uh, this week, I want to get into doing a service on the Rider mower. So that's the Husqvarna TS342, which is just sitting over there beside me. So let's get into it. So this is the beast that we're going to be doing a service on today. So I just want to do it. It's a hundred hour service. It's probably just a little bit over at the moment, but not too much, thankfully. Um, you know, I'm not going to stop mowing in the middle of a mowing session to hit it right on the exact hour. Sometimes I do a service beforehand, sometimes I do it just a little bit after, but generally pretty, pretty close to the mark. Before we start, you know, you're going to need some gear. So the first one's going to be some oil, obviously, and this is a hundred hour service. So I'm doing the oil filter. Now, to be honest, I actually do these filters re reasonably regularly. So every time I change the oil out, I generally also change the filter. In the handbook, it does say to change the oil and filter every 100 hours. And look, I actually do it a lot more often than that. Like I do it this every 50. Um, I definitely did it on the first, I think it's 25 hours when I first bought it. Um, after the first 20, might be around about 20, 25 hours each, I dropped the oil out and then put oil and filter and put that in. Um, also did the air filter at 50 hours as well. Um, again, according to the manual, that only needs to be done every 100 hours, not 50. But look, for me, this is the lifeblood of an engine, like clean oil, clean air getting into it, just keeps that engine alive and healthy a lot longer. Um, and having the owner's manual is very helpful too, um, because it helps you to remember how much oil you need to put into it. So for this particular model, being the TS342, um, I do have the V-twin Kawasaki engine in it and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, so that takes, once I take the oil filter out as well, so when you replace the oil filter, it takes just over 2 litres, so 2.1 litres is what it actually takes. Um, also I have this little tube when I change the oil, so this allows me to try and drain the oil away from the deck a little bit better. Now this is something that um, doesn't actually come with the mower but look it's just a little funnel that I can then put into where I need to put the oil. Now the other thing you're going to need is a oil collection tray. Now this is actually one I use on the car so you can see this little thing here it's where you can put your oil filter put that on it so it drains out and into here and this little bit here allows you to then pour it into another container. So this is it the 342 Let's just simply lift that up. And as you can see, this is the Kawasaki FR651V. And I know that because it's actually just written there in front of me. Sorry, I shouldn't be like that, should I? Um, let's see if I can zoom in on that. It is the 21 and a half horsepower engine. Now look, this has been great. This has got some grunt to it. Really love it, actually. Now, if you're wondering how to know what part numbers to get, just inside the cow, so the, the, the cover that covers the engine, You'll see this little picture, it's a little sticker. And what it does, it covers your main items like your oil filter, your belts, spark plugs, you know, I think it's a fuel filter as well. So air cleaner. And so the part numbers are there. So you, if you're ever in any doubt, you can just get those part numbers and use them. Now you might think that that's probably not that big a deal. I've also got the, the blade numbers there as well. Um, but for this particular mower, it comes with a couple of different size belts, so there's a couple of different options. Now I have once before been given the wrong size belt, 
um, to put on and it was really really frustrating because I didn't realize it was the wrong size belt and I couldn't get it on and I'd replaced the belt um, previously and it went on perfectly and I was there just scratching my head going what the heck um, and that's when after ringing up the shop going what am I missing you know, if, I, if I if I you know am I doing something wrong and they said uh, what's the part number and that's when I realized or that's when I actually got told there's two different part number belts for the um, this particular model mower so if you ever have that problem where the the belt that drives the blades underneath here does not fit for you so if I can get that in the picture for you um, yeah just check the part number make sure it's the right part number for your mower which will be on that little sticker over there and then you should be good to go so this is where we need to check the oil so this is our oil filter just in here it's all dirty there and down here I'm not sure you can see that is where we have to get the oil out from but what we need to do is remove this cover here and that'll give us access to it before we do all of that though actually I will remove that but then I'm going to start it up and get it nice and warm just for a couple of minutes because what that does is warms up the oil and helps it to come out that little bit easier and so I guess all the old oil out a little bit quicker so to get this out it's just a matter of lifting that up and it's not meant to be super easy because you don't want it falling off um, also got a couple of little grommets there so it lifts up and comes out so this little one here is probably easy enough to pull out says me taking forever so that comes out and that just slots back in through there to hold it in there you can try and pull that out but look at it just sort of come off pretty easy and there you can see the filter and this is where we need to get the oil out from but look first before I start doing anything I am going to clean that so um, obviously when I've got the oil coming out I don't want any rubbish or any dirt or grass or dust just any crud I don't want it going anywhere near the inside of the engine So before you start an engine, I do this every every single time. I always check the oil level. Now, look, I know the oil level in this is good, but if for some bizarre reason one day I come out, forget to check that, and it's dropped the oil at the bottom, and I haven't looked at it, and um, actually I did that wrong because I was talking. Um, so to check the oil, just take the, that out. You don't need to screw it back down. So you just put it onto the top. Check to see where the full mark is, and that's good to go. And I do that every time to make sure I've got oil before I kick it over. So that's the space we want to be working in. First off, I need to be taking out the little oil cap with the you know the measure on it. Um, look, just allow some air to flow through. Before I take off the filter, which is you know that big round one there, what I want to do, I want to focus in on this little nut down here. So you can either take that out with a flathead screwdriver or with the nut, uh, like so a, a socket or a spinner, ring spinner. But look, I'm just going to use a flat-headed screwdriver, which is what I normally use. Go and drain the oil out, and then I'll take the um, the filter off after that. Now to get your catch tray to fit, I'll just lower the deck down as far as you can get it and then that allows it to slide in underneath so if any oil sits on here it's going to drip into there a little bit better so you just want to be turning this anti-clockwise you see it's not done up super tight either by the way Coming out, that there, up to that, to there. 
So it's always a bit of a juggle, trying to, you know, oil's coming out, trying to get that in. Doesn't, it's not a great fit in there, but it actually does help a fair bit. So it does take a little while. Just got to be patient, let it all drain out. Now to take the filter off, let's just turn it anti-clockwise. And you'll see once I take it off, there's a little ledge underneath it, thankfully, which um, allows the oil to then slide onto this and drain down into the tray. So you can see the oil comes out, hits this little ledge here, then drains down. So what I want to do is check the O-ring on the sump on that little plug. I guess you call it the sump plug. Uh, make sure that's still good, no cracks, not going hard or anything, and that looks really good. I've cleaned it all up too, get all the dirt and stuff off of it. So that'll be good to go back in once it finishes draining. So that's pretty much done now. Put the sump plug back in. And I will clean all this up. Get all that oil off, clean it all down before I start putting everything back in. Um, obviously I'll put the sump plug in and I will probably also, uh, maybe not, uh, may even look at doing the oil filter just to stop any egress points coming out. So I don't want any more oil coming onto it now that I've done it. Um, but definitely this one in first, then I'll do this one give it a good clean and uh, start topping it back up. So you don't need to do super tight. As you saw before, it came off pretty, pretty easily. So for this particular engine, the oil filter, I'm using genuine Kawasaki filters on it. This is the uh, 49065-0721. And like I said before, look, just check what the right part numbers are because each engine can be slightly different. There's different variants of the engine obviously that go in as well. So just make sure you get the right part number. And look, I always go back to the shop where I bought it from. Uh, they have it on record, what model number it is, what the serial number is, all that sort of stuff. So from that, they can actually tell me what the part numbers should be. So before I put on an oil filter, it is also recommended to do that, uh, do this from the owner's manual. Just get some clean oil, not, not the dirty oil, get the, some clean oil, and just put that onto the o-ring there to seal it off. You might want to use rubber gloves, by the way. Um, like I mentioned before, the oil is toxic, so putting it on your bare skin means it's going to be absorbed in, and that's not good for you. And this just goes back on clockwise and you want to just screw it on until you feel, feel the pressure there and then another three quarters of a turn after that. So just hand tight, I don't put any spenders onto it or anything and like, I don't know how many, if that's three quarters of a turn or not but I don't want any oil coming out either. But look, I'm not putting like a lever on it and doing it, that is literally just hand tight. So happy with that. Now comes the clean up of all the oil around here before I start topping it back up at the top. Now you may have heard me say before that this engine once you replace the oil filter uses 2.1 litres of oil. If you don't replace the oil filter 
and you just leave the old one on, which, I, look, I wouldn't recommend that. Look, I'm not a mechanic by any means, but for me, leaving the oil filter on, like, when you leave it on, it still uses 1.8 litres. So that tells me there's 300 mils of oil sitting within that oil filter, and that's 300 mils of old, dirty oil, which is just going to mix with the new oil, and like I said, the lifeblood of an air-cooled engine is going to be your oil and clean air. So putting clean oil and mixing it with old, dirty oil just makes no sense to me at all. So I'd always replace the filter with the oil. I know there's a little bit of extra cost, um, but look, these things aren't cheap to buy. Um, and so for me to get the most life out of it and get the most use out of it, make sure this is running at peak power all of the time for as long as I possibly can, just makes sense. Um, and look, the reality is that if you go by the owner's manual, like you only need to do it every 100 hours, which for me is every couple of years, probably every, eh, probably about every 18 months or two years, I suppose. Um, I, look, look, I, I do do it more often, like I said, because uh, I like to keep it healthy. So before this job is fully done, I will start the engine again just to get the, in, the oil running through the engine, through the filter, make sure there's no leaks, and I will have to top it up because look, I, um, the oil container is a 4 litre container, obviously it takes 2.1 litres, so I didn't quite have another 2.1 litres to go in because last time I obviously used 2.1, uh, so I will need to top it up again, which is why I do have another container of oil there ready to go um, but yeah so the next step is start it up run it through for a minute or two and then check the oil levels as I just spray oil everywhere now you'll see that is full actually pretty much perfect so that finishes the oil changing component of it all you can see it's all nice and clean around here now you're probably looking at going Holy crap, Brett, how do you get that so clean? That's amazing. What can I say? It's just a gift. Um, actually, that's no, just called a brush and a rag. Um, but that is it. Look, I have run it. Um, no oil coming out, so that's a bonus. The next part of this service now will be under here. So under here is our air filter. So I do need to take that off, so there's a little screw on the bottom, I'll need to take that off. I'm not too sure if I'll be able to get the camera into that. Um, and then I'll take this off. Now this is a little foam cover that sits on the air, the paper air cleaner element, and I'll take that out and change it over. So to get this off, and I apologize for any angles, there's a little wing nut thing down here. So you don't even need to get a screwdriver into it. You just get onto that, and you undo that little piece there. So I've loosened it off, turned it around, so that's what it looks like um, if you're looking for that on your mower. So that's what that has looked like. So underneath all that was a whole heap of grass and stuff, which actually I hadn't really taken, hadn't really seen because it's really bedded underneath. Because I do clean the top of it, as you can see, it stays pretty clean. But underneath, that's terrible. So let's give that a clean. So to clean that, I actually left that foam piece on around the cleaner, or sorry, around the paper element, then just used the bristles on the brush. Um, so that gave it some structure and I was able to give it a good clean out. Still see it a little bit there, so I'll, I'll do a little bit more before I put that onto the new one. Um, over here though, I do need to clean out around here. That's where the, the filter sits and making sure I don't get any down there will be the important part. So here's the new filter. Part number, if you're wondering, is 11013-0752. But once again, please do check the part number with your particular engine. And I was actually going to get a knife and open that, but it has a zip seal on it. So, knife not needed. So here's the new one, just tilt that down a little bit for you, there we go, here's the old one. For me it's just a matter of taking the foam cover off, 
I'm actually going to turn that inside out too, you know, um, just to give that a bit more of a clean off. Um, I'll again use the old filter as some structure to that and give it a brush off outside just so it is nice and clean. Now, I could actually give that a wash. You can actually do that. You can just go and put some, put a bit of a wash through it. Um, but look, it's it's not too bad. Um, as I say that, I'm looking at it going, nope, I am. So I'm going to go take that down to the house, put it in a bucket and a bit of detergent and give that a wash out. And then look, it'll dry by the time I go to use the mower next time. So look, I've just given it a wash, went down to the house, got a bucket, some detergent, uh, got a bit of a wash off. So I'm just going to slot that over the top, put that back on the mower. So that's it all back in. Just had to drop the little wing nut there again. And I, look, I always like to keep that on the bottom. I know it's probably easier at the top, but down the bottom means it's not going to get in the way. It's not going to hit on the cover. So air cleaner done. So, so far we have oil done, air cleaner done. Um, and now I'm going to look at the spark plugs. So the spark plugs, if you look at the engine, on the front, obviously it's a V twin. So I've got two of these. So I've just pulled that off and now I'll take that off, give it a clean and see what it looks like. So it's a 13 16th socket. So that's what it's come up like. So it's a bit black, but I'll give that clean off and we'll put it back in. I will also check the gap on that as well. And get that right near the, the lens. But I will check the gap of that plug as well. So if you're wondering what the gap is, it's a 30 thou gap or 0.75, I think it said in the owner's manual. And so I'm just putting that through there, it's 30 thou, and actually the gap is spot on. So really happy with that. We gave it a bit of a clean up with a wire brush. And now I know it look, probably doesn't look super great, but it is a lot better than what it was. And that'll be good to go back in. It's a spark bug cleaned. The gap checked at 30 thou and put back in and lead nicely back on. So there you go, another job done. Uh, look, that doesn't really take that long to do, to be honest. It's probably about maybe half an hour. Look, I took a lot longer because I was just taking my time and making an afternoon of it. Also doing some filming in, in the process as well, which makes it a little bit more time consuming. Um, and also I like to clean things up as I go along as well. So I might like to make it nice and clean. So it's ready to go for the next time as opposed to just taking the old stuff out, putting new stuff in and leaving it all dirty. So look, it doesn't take need to take too long at all but look i'm happy with where we've got so did the oil did the oil filter cleaned up around it did the air filter clean the little foam cover around the paper element as well and also clean and re-gapped well actually just checked the gaps on the spark plugs because the gap was fine and to be honest i don't think those gaps should change too much unless you want to be starting to play with them yourself um, but apart from that the service is done so it's now ready to go um, before spring actually so it'd be nice uh, so if you enjoyed that please give the big thumbs up uh, hit the subscribe if you haven't already I do appreciate all the subscribes also appreciate all the comments uh, I know in the last video I did get a lot of views and a lot of comments coming out of that look I really do appreciate that um, I do get back and answer all of those comments that come through so thank you very much for that and also thank you for the suggestions for an upcoming video if I've got another rainy day um, so the suggestion was to have a look at some of the, the books that influenced me um, not just on the property but just in general as well so look thank you very much for that do appreciate it until next time thanks for watching